HBO's Gilded Age is a fun show to watch. And one of the families in the show is the Russell family. A lot of the show is based on real life in New York and Newport, Rhode Island. Bertha is the wife of George Russell. In real life, Cornelius Vanderbilt was the richest man in America in the 1880s. He had a monopoly on trains. And in real life, Bertha Vanderbilt was the wife of his grandson. The grandson was Willie, and she divorced him. And she doted on her daughter, Consuelo, just like Mrs. Russell does in the show. She had a house in Newport called Marble House, and I went to see it. It's like the White House in marble. This is the front of the house, and here's the entryway to the house. They have tours. If you ever want to see it, just go up there and see the house. Here's the back of the house. It's got a big backyard, and it overlooks Newport Harbor with all the other mansions. In the lower part of the house is the servants' area, including the kitchen here. And upstairs there's a library. It's got beautiful wood all over it, drapery. Very ornate, just like the TV show. The TV show takes after these homes. Here's one of the bedrooms. I wanted to focus on Bertha's bedroom. Here it is. It's gorgeous, very ornate, very expensive, and I decided to make you this little video. This is Mrs. Vanderbilt's little bedroom. This house was in the movie The Great Gatsby with Robert Redford and Mia Farrell. Take a look at how big this bed is and all the details of it. You would not find a bed like this at RC Willie or a mattress firm. Four million. Marble House heralded the ascendancy in Newport of a famous family with a truly remarkable patriarch, Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt. When he was born in 1794, George Washington was still alive. By the time Commodore Vanderbilt died in 1877, America had become a world power. Early in the 19th century, Vanderbilt a far-sighted entrepreneur, realized that steam would become the driving power of the Industrial Revolution. Over the years, he converted his sailing fleet first into steam vessels and then a network of railroads. Almost single-handed, Vanderbilt established a vital transportation system that would carry passengers and freight all the way across the new nation. The Commodore's son, William H. Vanderbilt, continued to build the railroad system, offering the country's first low-cost, long-distance transportation, a major factor in spurring the industrial growth that would bring America to maturity as a world economic power. Alva, wife of the Commodore's grandson, William K. Vanderbilt, was the consummate social hostess at the turn of the century. She was also a determined patron of the arts, the quality reflected in the spectacular period rooms of Marble House. Richard Morris Hunt's versatility is in evidence throughout the house. The dining room earned him a special reputation for using marble veneer as an interior finish. 
His colleagues, Austrian sculptor Karl Bitter and the Parisian interior designers of Jules Allard et Fils, outdid themselves in their rendition of bronze sculpture, light fixtures, hardware, woodwork, and furnishings based on 17th and 18th century prototypes. Hunt cleverly used the symmetrical facade of Marble House to hide a network of passages, staff quarters, small service rooms, and hidden mezzanine spaces. As a tribute to this brilliant architect, the Vanderbilts had sculptor Carl Bitter carve a relief medallion of Hunt's profile above the windows of the staircase mezzanine. He is in good company since Vanderbilt had a similar likeness of Jules Hardouin Mansart, Louis XIV's primary architect, carved above the adjacent window. Together, their likenesses flank a bust of Louis XIV. In the family quarters of this sumptuous dwelling lived Consuela Vanderbilt, a shy, sensitive 18-year-old, one of the great beauties of her day. Alva's negotiation of Consuela's engagement to the ninth Duke of Marlborough was the most celebrated match at the turn of the century. Here was a combination of Vanderbilt power and wealth with the ancient and noble lineage of the House of Marlborough. With this marriage, the Vanderbilts entered the world of international society. Consuela's father, William Vanderbilt, was a great sportsman, respected here and abroad for his yacht racing and stable of thoroughbred racing horses. William's son, Harold Vanderbilt, was also an avid sportsman. One of America's greatest yachtsmen, he is the only person ever to win the America's Cup for the United States three times all of them on the world-famous America's Cup course off Newport. At the time, Newport seemed to be America's sporting capital. In addition to yachting, there was also world champion class tennis, polo, coaching, and auto racing. All of these were popularized by the summer colonists who made Newport their base. Ultimately, it was Harold Vanderbilt who opened Marble House to the public by donating the funds for the Preservation Society's purchase of the house from the Frederick Prince estate. The Prince Foundation donated all of the original furnishings. Before leaving Marble House, visitors often stop at Alva's colorful Chinese tea house, which offers a beautiful view of the Atlantic Ocean. Where, aboard the family yacht, Alva, at luncheon, prepared by a staff of French chefs, could include such delicacies as langouste à la Newburg and tornado à la Moelle, topped off with uh, crêpe au confiture and fromage. Alva Smith Vanderbilt, by now Mrs. Belmont, became militant in support of women's suffrage. Today, visitors to Marble House observe a relic of her famous tea parties and rallies, which featured Votes for Women China, fired especially for the occasion. Marble House, a perfect record of grand living at the turn of the century. After Cornelius Vanderbilt died, John D. Rockefeller became the richest man in the world by creating the oil industry single-handedly and creating the Standard Oil Company, which was a big monopoly of oil companies and trains to bring the oil to market. His partner was Henry Flagler, who developed Florida. And in the show, The Gilded Age, Tom Rakes is courting Marion. They're going to elope. And in the last episode of season one, he turns it down because he's going to run off, basically, with Henry Flagler's niece. You never know quite how that's going to turn out. In real life, Whitehall was his house in Florida, his mansion. It was like a Greek temple. And now it's open to the public, just like Marble House. 
here's the beautiful entryway full of artwork and items from all over the world. There's paintings adorn the house, crystal chandeliers. What I love about it is the ocean breeze. Just like Newport's nice in the summer, Florida's nice in the winter. And another parallel is this house is largely built of marble and limestone and it's got a very solid look to it just like Marble House does. There's the front of the house and inside here's the large entryway, the lobby. You can see the lobby from the library here on the first floor which has beautiful tapestries and wood paneling and Italian furniture throughout and a portrait up there of Flagler. And here are some objects of art such as Fabergé eggs that they used to collect back then. They traveled by private train. That was their version of private jets. This is outside of the Flagler house, known as Whitehall. And this is the boat that you have to take. When you're in Florida, it's, you gotta travel large. So here is the harbor down here in Palm Beach. Palm Beach, Florida is a nice place to spend the winter because it's nice and breezy. And this is the back of the house. And this is the train that he would take to come down he basically was responsible for getting the trains into Florida. That's one of his crowning achievements. And here's a view of the harbor. But first we're gonna go on the train. This train smells really old, which I like. That fine would work. This is where they slept. If you want to read more about Henry Flagler, read this great book. It's online on Amazon. Stay tuned next season because I'm sure you'll see more of Henry and the Vanderbilts. And thanks for watching.